Yes. Yesterday we discussed about cloud computing, what is cloud and how cloud works. And today we will start with uh, understanding what uh, what is AWS and we'll see some of its uh, services that it offers. And we'll also have a live demo session of one of the AWS service. To begin with, we'll have a quick recap on uh, what we discussed yesterday. What is cloud computing? So to give a brief uh, introduction, well, or to give a brief de definition, cloud computing is something that uh, where you are using somebody else's computer or services. A collection of servers which creates a platform. So cloud computing is something where you are renting or you are availing benefits from someone else's infrastructure. So these are the list of, list of services, uh, only a few list of services that cloud computing provides. First, starting with servers, databases, security, networks, and so on. There are a number of services that cloud computing and cloud provider offers to its users, which we can avail. To have an understanding on how big this market is and what are the competitors in this market, in cloud computing market, the leading cloud provider is AWS as of the data of 2020-21. I'm sure the data in the current scenario also has the majority of, uh, AWS has the majority of market share. So if you see the the market share of AWS that it has is 33%, whereas we have uh, other uh, competitors and who are uh, equivalent uh, to AWS when it comes to security and the services that they provide. Uh, the competitor, the immediate competitor of AWS that is Amazon Web Services is Azure, okay, which is, uh, which is owned by Microsoft. Then we have Google Cloud, uh, which which is also having a decent percentage of market share. And then we have other uh, small players also available in the market, like Alibaba, uh, IBM, Salesforce, and so on. Uh, so there are many other private cloud providers as well, apart from the list that is, that is given. So this list is, is only a few, a few cloud providers uh, who has a percentage of uh, market share. But there are many cloud provide private cloud providers who where we can also avail similar benefits. Yes, uh, and the services that these provides, as we discussed yesterday, uh, that includes PaaS, that is platform as a service, infrastructure as a service, or software as a service. Next, um, so in this course, we will be discussing or we will be understanding and learning more about AWS, which is nothing but Amazon Web Services. Because Amazon, as I sh shown you in previous slides, so Amazon holds a majority of the market share and many startups and companies prefer AWS over any other cloud providers. Yes, uh, there are uh, high, uh, high demand for Amazon, uh, AWS, Azure, and GCP. Uh, comparatively, Amazon has the highest uh, demand uh, in the organization level. So AWS is world's most comprehensive and broadly adopted cloud, cloud platform, offering over 200 plus fully featured services from data centers globally, which means as the services that I uh, shown you or uh, I've uh, told you about, so like servers, databases, like this, there are 200 plus services that uh, this AWS cloud provider offers to its users. There are, uh, as I mentioned, there are many resources, there are many services, depending on for each and every requirement and depending on the requirements, user can opt or avail these services from AWS. So these are a few services that are listed below. Uh, we have something called IAM, which is for security that is identity and access management. We have EC2 instances that are nothing but servers, which we can avail or provision, or we can create servers on AWS cloud. Then we have a networking where we can create our own private cloud inside our AWS data centers, within which we can create our own servers, uh, our routers, uh, our 
uh, networking uh, components or uh, databases. And basically, we can create a mini cloud, a mini private cloud in, inside our AWS data center, inside our AWS account. So with these, uh, with this, uh, having uh, creating uh, our own private cloud, this will give us 99.99% uh, uh, of uh, security, 99% of uh, privacy. It's it's completely isolated between uh, from other private clouds that are created in AWS. Okay, so so the so data protection, data security is uh, it's uh, utmost priority for AWS. So they will they are making sure that there is no data loss, there is uh, there is no business loss um, that happens where uh, where organizations we offer organizations who ha who are availing these benefits. Our uh, AWS is working uh, to make sure that there is no data loss, there is no downtime uh, for the ap application or business hours. So these are the major uh, services uh, that you will learn or uh, you will uh, you will find more useful when you go uh, to any corporate or any organization or uh, i can say these are the basic uh, services that we need to know we need to learn and understand and have a good hands on on how this works and uh, how to uh, how to work on e e these tools okay you are, so it's not mandated that you have to be proficient in all these tools at least if you have a good knowledge and working knowledge, basically hands-on about working knowledge on these tools, uh, it will be really beneficial for you to crack AWS interviews and also uh, in your in your work experience as well. So starting with uh, migrate. So migrate is something uh, as I explained to you yesterday in yesterday's session. Uh, we have three to uh, three cloud modules, cloud computing modules. One is private. Okay, where we are, uh, there were organizations or companies hosting their data center in their uh, in their co corporate building in their organization. Individually, that is physical servers available or installed in their uh, in their companies. So those are something called private private cloud. They are creating their own private network uh, to host their applications or host their data. Then we have some public clouds like uh, clouds the what we have from aws azure google etc so these are public clouds uh, where uh, people uh, outside of organization where general people can uh, can connect to these cloud providers and avail uh, their services benefit next we have hybrid model in this hybrid model is a combination of private and public cloud where organization can opt for these uh, kind of model and distribute their data, distribute their work from uh, on-premises as well as on cloud. They can have a partial data uh, working in their organization, which is an on-premise cloud and some in cloud, in public cloud. So let's say we have an organization where we have TVs of data saved in our disks, and uh, and company wants to uh, send or migrate or push data to cloud, right? So the bandwidth or the internet that we have uh, locally, it will take uh, hours of time to transfer all this data from one place to another, from your on-premises to public cloud. And this is not cost-effective way of doing it. So AWS allows or provides a feature which helps you to transfer your data from your company, from your on-premises network to AWS cloud more feasible and more cost-effective way. So there are various ways how you can actually transfer or you can uh, convert or migrate your data. So starting with AWS Snowball. So under Snowball, we have multiple <clears throat> multiple types of snowball snowball is something that where aws will send a physical device like for an example if you have a lesser uh, size of uh, data that you want to move it to aws cloud then they will send you a lesser uh, a lesser physical device let's say for a, a suitcase size of device if you have a higher device then they will send you a mini truck or Depending on the size, they will send you the disks. They will send you the physical devices 
or to your office or on premises network where aws team will uh, transfer all the data and they will take that data back to aws and push all your data to aws cloud with this uh, it is very easy and very faster way of transferring your data from your on premises to cloud and there are other features there are other services depending on the requirement for databases servers or applications there are if there are different tools that aws provides using which we can easily migrate our data from on premises to aws cloud Next, we have a service called Compute. So as mentioned, uh, we can avail servers as a service from AWS. That is, we can have provision our own server in AWS. It's a raw server. You will get a raw operating system within which you can install your own applications. You can host your websites and do uh, and use that <laughs> use those services or use those servers like your physical machine. And under compute, uh, not only these three, but there are multiple types of compute, multiple types of servers that AWS offers. Uh, one, we have something called Elastic Beanstalk. So this is a server which where you do not have to worry about what operating system or whatnot. Everything will be managed by AWS. You just have to worry about your application and data like I explained yesterday as a platform, as a service. So with this, you can, you just need to push your data, push your application and your AWS will take care of what platform it is, uh, what runtime it should be used or what is the operating system that is required to run your application. Everything will be managed by AWS, upgrading, maintaining everything. Similarly, other computes like Elastic Container for containerization, um, and then many more. There are not only these three, but there are many other types of uh, compute services that it has. Similarly, we have a AWS database as a service. So this service includes all types of uh, databases that are available in the market, like DocumentDB, SQL, NoSQL, DynamoDB, General RDS, uh, sorry, Amazon RDS. Then we have uh, Amazon Aurora Serverless, um, we have another, uh, yes, this one, uh, Amazon RDS. This is, uh, uh, this is an RDS. Uh, this is a database service that uh, is created by AWS, which we can avail. So again, next we have something called developer tools. These developer tools are nothing but DevOps tools, like how we have DevOps tools like Jenkins uh, to automate your process. Um, to run your or to run your jobs um, automatically, triggering your jobs automatically, that we will come in the later stages. Uh, similar, uh, like the tools that are required to develop your applications uh, from your building stage till production, the tools that are required, these tools will be offered by your AWS. This category comes under software as a service where you do not have to worry about anything. So AWS will provide its software to you as a as an offering, which you can avail to, de to develop or to work on your applications. Next, we have management and governance. So this is something which is very important when it comes to production. Once you have deployed, once you have started working on AWS, it's very important that you manage and monitor how your uh, how your application how your deployment is working in aws so for monitoring we have a tool called uh, amazon cloud watch so this is a tool which helps you to which helps you and provides you metrics on how your uh, servers or how your aws services are working let's say you are using a server and a database it will give you a report on how how they are functioning, uh, how wh what is the operating system, what is the usage, and uh, how the traffic is to your servers and everything. So all these uh, information will be provided by AWS CloudWatch. We can also customize these reports. We can also customize how the CloudWatch should work as per your requirement. 
then we have something called cloud formation which is again uh, comes under category of infrastructure as a service where uh, let's say you have a requirement of creating three servers to host your web application and that also requires a database just to give you a simple scenario uh, for your for your web server you need three servers and a database that needs to be created and uh, today you have this requirement and at the end the requirement is you have to shut down all these three computers three servers and your database the next day if you have a similar requirement you do not go back and just uh, start creating all three servers that was again a time consuming process but cloud formation wherein you can code or you can write what is your requirement in a format then you can run your scripts so amazon will find your script and create whatever the requirement services or so uh, services that are required to run your applications like three servers and a database so the script that you have written in a cloud formation template so that amazon uses that template and creates three servers and a database for you Similarly, we have uh, Amazon has a feature called config where you can configure how, uh, what your servers, what is your server, and what are the things that are uh, that are that needs to be configured while your server is creating, while your server is provisioning. Next, we have Cloud Trail, and then there are many other services that are available. That are there. This is just a few lists. There are one of the most common uh, services that I have listed here. And like uh, in security and compliances, we have a uh, guard duty, Amazon Mice uh, Inspector. We have uh, something called IAM. Uh, IAM is again a basic uh, uh, identity and access management uh, tool or a server service, which helps you to create users on uh, AWS, wherein uh, you are creating our AWS account. And we on behalf of you, or if you want to add more users who can access your own account, your personal or a business account you can create users you can assign them permissions you can see uh, who can access and what they can access so these the, these are the basic list of uh, components or services uh, that aws has uh, which we need to uh, know and understand how they work yeah no problem so that is all this required because I um, just wanted to tell you what are the stages that it involves while creating your AWS account. As we both already have AWS account available, uh, we can proceed with this. So first is like, as you are aware, it requires your valid email address and uh, for payment, you, you might need a debit or deb a credit card. Okay, uh, so for first one year, okay, as soon as you have signed up to your AWS account for the first one year, you will get a free trial uh, where you can use this service free tier account so this is where we can actually practice you can create your resources so every server if you are creating on aws you will get the option uh, see, see there are many uh, see like for an example if you are creating an ec2 instance you will get a list of types of ec2 instance that you can create so one of the types that you will see is to micro and that uh, it will show you as a free tier account free tier that means uh, this this type of pc2 instance or this type of server is available as a free tier where you will not be charged okay and it is very limited there are a certain number like thousand hours or so so where you can uh, keep your instances running or uh, instances created so beyond this are or beyond this free trial that is for one year so if you are creating any resources, if you are using any resources or services of AWS, you'll be charged. And as I explained uh, yesterday, uh, so cloud computing, the benefit, one of the most important benefit of cloud computing is uh, it doesn't, uh, you do not have to pay anything upfront and uh, it, it uses a model that is pay as you go. And there are many uh, services in AWS which offers for second, for only pay only for the seconds that you utilize uh, your uh, services. There are also a concept of milliseconds. So they are making sure that you are not paying any, even a single penny extra, right? 
So there are many services that are available. And even if you are practicing or doing anything on AWS account, make sure you are choosing the free tier option. And once you are done uh, working or having a hands on on those services, make sure you terminate or delete those instances at the end to avoid any uh, surprise bills. Right. So next is something AWS uh, regions and availability zones. So uh, AWS, just give me a second. So AWS regions. So AWS region, uh, when, when we say a region, region is nothing but a geographical area. So as we are availing uh, these services from AWS or any cloud computing uh, or cloud providers, uh, the servers or databases or the services that I listed, so they must be having uh, these servers or these, uh, these options, I mean, uh, these services or these servers physically uh, hosted on some location or some place. Okay, and uh, so as they have hosted on, on a certain place and that place would be called as one data center. Like for an example, AWS has bought one, uh, a football size ground for one uh, to host a stack of servers. And in that, uh, in that space, in that place, they will have different types of servers like uh, uh, compute servers, your database servers and et cetera, whatnot. So that place or for that uh, particular patch is called data center. Similarly, so there will be multiple locations or there will be multiple places or there are multiple uh, similar geographical area which are very closed, closely attached together. So these are called data center clusters. So this cluster, a group of clusters is called an availability zone. Whereas a region is nothing but a group of availability zones are called a region. So to give you a definition, a AWS region is a separate geographical area where AWS sets up and operates its infrastructure. Each region is a collection of data centers that are in relatively close proximity to each other. Whereas availability zone, within each availability zone, there are multiple availability zones available. And these availability zone is essentially a data center or a collection of a data center and within a region. To, just to give you an overview, um, I have just uh, given a mini list of uh, region and its available zones. You can see on your left, uh, we have a list named code and then name. So on your left, we have US East 1, US East 2, right? So these are regions. So in US North Virginia region, there is, uh, so AWS has marked that place as one region. Inside this North Virginia, there will be multiple available zones. For an example, US East 1A, B, C, and D. For an example, there are four available zones in one region. And that available zone is again divided into data centers. But these data centers are closely related. So that group will be called as one uh, available zone. Or, yes, one available zone. And a collection of available zones are called a region. So when you are availing any services of AWS, you will be mainly targeting on one region. Let's say you have you have a requirement of creating two EC2 instances or two servers. So you have to create both the servers in one region because if you switch to a different region, for example, from North Virginia to Ohio, which I'll show you a demo when, I, when we are doing this, you will not find that those servers that you have created in region one. Okay, reason being these regions are complete, completely isolated. They are not connected. So uh, availability zones are connected to each other, but not regions. Regions are separate identities. So within, uh, available, uh, within a region, we create our 
EC2 instances or any services under one available zone. The reason the concept why we have this available zone is, uh, let's say that we have a web application and we have hosted our web application using AWS services. We have created two servers or two EC2 instances and they are created in one data center, in one available zone. Due to some technical reason, if that data center is down, then your entire application is down. Nobody will be able to access it. To avoid this scenario, we have multiple available tree zones in one region where you can segregate or where you can divide your uh, servers into multiple available zones. You, if you have two EC2 instances or servers, you can create one uh, available uh, one server in each available zone so that even if one server one available zone is down you have the other available zone to support it right do ask me if you have any questions okay i'll be happy to go back and explain so once we have a good understanding on what available zones and things like that um available zones and regions data centers then we can proceed with um uh, our first server a service, AWS service, that is IAM, Identity and Access Management. Do you have any questions? Yeah. So can you please uh, repeat like the kind of, I, I have one question, like uh, are these fixed, what are the locations you, you told now? Like are they fixed for all the AWS users or across the globe? Yes, for across the globe. So this, uh, these regions, what you see on your left, okay, this is only a limited list. So this list, what you see, this is for everybody. Okay, so you are, see, let's say, you are creating an AWS account on AWS server directly, where you have access to all the regions in the globe. Okay, if there are like 20 regions that AWS provides, you have access to all 20 regions. You're sitting in US, and if you want to create an EC2 instance in somewhere in Asia, you are able, you have access to create an EC2 instance there. Okay, vice versa. Similarly, as mentioned, uh, so within a region, there are multiple available zones. Again, this available zone will be divided into multiple places again. So let's say in, if we talk about uh, uh, India, so let's say if we, if there are, uh, India is one region, that is Asia, so there will be three available zones. One will be somewhere in the north, one where somewhere in the south India, and somewhere in the east somewhere. So this is a uh, available zones. Within one region, we have three available zones. So these are connected. So uh, for each and every user of AWS will have access to all the regions, to all the available zones. Okay. Now uh, to give you another example, uh, let's say we have uh, we have hosted on one application whose users are whose customers or who, whose end users are based on US. We live in India, but our application users are mainly on in US. So, uh, like creating or hosting an application in Asia Pacific or in Asia region uh, will create some kind of a latency for the people who are living in US or in some other region. Okay. To avoid this latency, what we can do is we can, uh, instead creating a server, instead hosting our application in Asia region, we can directly host a region, host our application on US region. So that it will be easier for the people uh, to access the application much faster than any other region. Any questions? Uh, are you clear? Yeah, thank you. So you will have a good understanding when you see this in action, when you see this uh, directly on AWS account, it will be an easier understanding. So it is just a theory. I just, I'm just wanted to show you and explain you things. So when you see this in- uh, oh, yeah. Demo, so, it will be really question, like I have created AWS account, but I didn't use for any such kind of, uh, like for my, for my learning purpose. So till how many days is it, like, is it uh, uh, active? Oh, see, your AWS account is active uh, as long as you, I mean, you are not 
manually deactivating it or AWS is not deactivating your account for some reason, right? But there is a free tier account that is applicable. When you create an AWS account, as soon as you have started your uh, you started uh, using your AWS after creation, uh, a free tier account will will get started okay so that free tier account yeah this that free tier account has a very limited option or limited resources that you can utilize uh, but that is only for one year so once you have completed that one year of cycle then you have then yes you can create uh, ec2 instances and everything but every service that you use the model that AWS uses, you have to pay according to that. Like for the minutes that you have ut utilized that service, you have you will get a bill at the end of the month stating this is the bill and you need to pay up, uh, pay that bill to continue the AWS services. It is it is same like any other uh, uh, access or accounts that you create on internet. It is as simple. Uh, just that these services are something uh, goes on a subscription basis. No, no, sorry, not subscription, but pay as you go model where you have to pay for the services that you have utilized. But for that one year that uh, AWS gives you that one year so that you learn and um, like practice your services and understand how AWS services works. If you remember, one was the uh, when you created your AWS account, you can just target that and um see if you can uh create and i will show you where you can actually check your bills and things so that it will be easier even if you have been uh billed for uh, services that you are not aware of for example if you have uh, instead of running a free tier type of ec2 instance you have created some other type and you have received a bill and you are not aware what you have done and as you are not aware as you are learning this aws course you, you can anytime go back to aws uh, call center so sorry you can reach out to anyone from aws technical team and uh, you can just request them and tell them what the scenario was uh, they will refund your or they will just um, wipe your bill amount so that is also a possible way of uh, removing unnecessary charges.